The next interview is with Joe Sauerwine. My name's Gene Horton. We're back again at the Bayport Blue Point Public Library. It's May 24th, 2013. And our guest for this hour or so is Joe Sauerwine, a very well known Blue Pointer, primarily because of his role in the fire department. So we'd like to say hello to Joe, and uh, we'll just start by the basics here. What, what is your full name, Joe? Good afternoon, Jean. My full name is Joseph F. Sauerwein. The F stands for Frederick, but I hardly ever use that. Yeah. Just an initial, Joseph. And you're far better known as Joe. And when and where were you born, Joe? I was born on October 20th, 1946, in um, a hospital in Brooklyn, New York. In Brooklyn, wow. Western Long Island. I was born in a hospital in Brooklyn, too. And they always say Western Long Island. That, that sounds great. Because <laughs> some people in Brooklyn, they don't. people out here don't think Brooklyn's on Long Island. But it is. Well, so. <laughs> we'll just leave that one alone. We'll leave that one alone. So, and where have you lived in Blue Point? Well, we first moved to Blue Point in 1955. Um, and basically, except for a, for a few years when I was gone, uh, and I lived in... Um, Let's see, I lived in Middle Island for a short period of time. I lived in Holtzville for a short period of time. And I lived with my uncle Samuel <laughs> wherever he sent me for three years. <laughs> Samuel, uh, right. But then I, uh, I was fortunate enough to move back to Blue Point. So I, would, I consider myself, although not born here, I consider yeah. myself as close to a native Blue Pointer as you can be. Yep. Your roots are here. My roots Definitely are here. Definitely are here. Yeah, so you've really lived in Blue Point then, basically for your whole life, your your knowledgeable life. Right, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, that's great. Not many people can say that. And uh, how did your family come to live in Blue Point? What led them here? Well, my father was born and raised in uh, in in Queens, Brooklyn, and Queens, uh, and worked with his father in the plumbing business uh, again in in New York City. He used to talk about traveling out in the country with his parents for a little vacation or a little jaunt. And believe it or not, they used to come to Blue Point. Blue Point. Now, that was probably in the late 20s, the beginning, the early 30s. As luck would have it, um, or coincidence would have it, when he decided he didn't want to be in the city anymore or wanted to move out here, first we moved to Patchwork. We had a summer home in Canaan Lake, which he converted to a full-time use. And then we kind of outgrew that house, and that's when we moved to Blue Point. Wonderful. So he remembers coming <clears throat> to Blue Point as a child, and he was born in 1918. Wow. He remembers coming to Blue Point as a child because that's about as far as you'd want to travel yeah. back in the day. And he remembers the old Bradley Beach, or sure. I don't know if it was Bradley Beach at the time, <clears throat> but the end of Blue Point yeah. Avenue on the wow. west side. And then some, quite a few years later, he moved here. Yeah. And, that's, and we have a lot of hotels here. Oh, absolutely. And we're a tourist I, destination. I remember the stories about the hotels. Yeah. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I only remember seeing about two of them that were no yeah. longer in use as hotels. Right. But I remember the stories, and certainly from the, my fire department affiliation, yeah. some of the older timers told me about <clears throat> the fires they had. Yeah. There. Many of the hotels burned down, as you know. Unfortunately. <clears throat> unfortunately. The only one I remember was Chippewa Inn down here on the corner, Middle Road and uh, Blue Point Avenue, northeast corner. That's one of the ones I That's remember one still you remember. being there, yep. but, it, but it, wasn't, it wasn't in No, use. it wasn't operating. Right. No, no, it was just abandoned. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it was dismantled. Yeah, the only one still in existence is the one over on uh, Nelson. Nelson and Middle oh, yes, Road, Blue yes. Point Motor Inn. Right. That used to be, my grandparents stayed there, and it was called Namke Lodge. But then... Now it's Blue Point mode, but still in business. Mm -hmm. but that's it. And what high school did you attend, Joe? Bayport Blue Point High School. Oh, that's great. And graduated in? 1964. 64. Wow. Class of 64. That was the year of the World's Fair. Yes, it was. Yep. 1964 World's Fair. Do you remember many of your high school teachers or 
I remember a fair number. Yeah, a fair uh, number. I believe them. it was junior high school, James Brown, Jimmy Brown. Oh, Jimmy Brown. And I think he's still... He's still around. Still around. Yeah. I haven't seen him in many yep. years. And uh, um, not... That's right. Let's see, about a year or so ago, I saw uh, Earl Tyler. Earl Tyler. Was a that was shop. Yep. He looks... Just like I remember him when I was in his shop oh. class. Now, is he still alive? Well, this a couple of years ago he was. Good. I hope he still is. I certainly hope. I he know is. Jimmy Brown is. Yes, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. Still alive. I heard about um, some other gentleman who uh, met yeah. with yeah. Jimmy not too long ago. So. I meet him at historical society meetings. He'll pop in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but a real nice guy. But I remember some. Yep. Um, uh, I remember Dwayne Hawkins oh, from across course. the street. Um, yeah. Herbert Hannon, oh, who lived Hannon. in one of the oldest homes in Blue yep. Point, I think, right down the street. Avenue. His it was his sister, I think, oh. um, was also a teacher over there in the Blue Point Elementary School. Oh. I don't think I had her for any classes, but I remember remember that lady yeah. and Mrs. Larrabee, oh, Mrs. who Larrabee. didn't remember Mrs. Larrabee. Mrs. Onward, Larrabee. Christian soldiers. <laughs> I don't think they teach penmanship in school oh. anymore, and oh. it's not her fault. But my no. penmanship is absolutely <laughs> terrible. Not because she didn't try, but because I just am she very tried. very sloppy. Yep, she tried. Alice Larrabee. Yes. I still and think of it when I go by the house, Bayview Avenue. Yes, and then there was Bob Luff. Oh, Bob Luff, of course. Uh, I think we started in school together. That was oh. He was a teacher yeah. when I went to, to the Blue Point Elementary School for the first time. Wow. I think that was his first year as a teacher in Blue Point, anyhow, yeah. and my first year as a student in Blue Point. Now, in those days, did they have graduation from Blue Point School? Or did you merge right into Bayport? No, I think we merged, we merged right, right into in. into Bayport. I we know we did. consolidated, and I, after that we didn't have graduations. Right, so yeah. I don't know exactly when the consolidation was, but um, yeah. I, don't re- I don't recall any separate ceremony. Yeah. No. That's pretty. Were you active in sports? Did you play any sports? Uh, not really. I, not I, really, Sports no. never was my thing. No, but, no. Um, yeah. but high school, that was a great experience, I'm sure. It yeah. certainly was. I yeah. remember some of the other names there. James Wilson Young. Oh, of course. As a matter of fact, I think um, yeah. at some point the high school, when I attended, uh, was actually renamed for him. Yes, it was. For a short time, it was right. James Wilson Young High School. Now it's the middle school. It's a different school, though. Oh, uh, yeah, right? different school. Right. It's okay. up off Sylvan. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. that's named in his honor. That's yeah. the only school in our district that's named for a person. Mm-hmm. All the others are named for streets. All right. Academy, Sylvan, Blue Point Avenue. I also remember Nick Maletta. Oh, yeah. Um, Did you have him as a teacher? Yes, I had Nick? him as a teacher. For Spanish, was it? Or uh, excuse seems to me he was a language teacher. I never a teacher, but, uh, yeah. but I never took Spanish. I took yeah. Latin for four oh, years. Latin, yeah, good. And that's coming really handy because a lot of people speak Latin. I, no, I'm I only know, kidding. I know. Of course, but, Dead language. But it uh, does help. I, yes, it does. It does help. help. Because it is the root of many of the I words. I wonder if they still use. teach it. I don't think. I, I bet they don't. It's I probably really now just French and Spanish. But anyway, Nick Maletta, he was also a world traveler. Yes. He was a great traveler. He organized trips. Yeah. Uh, I also yeah. remember Paul Harenberg and I oh, had him yes. as a teacher. Of course. Yes, and then he went on to um, a political career. Yeah, uh, New York State Assembly, I right. believe. His wife works here, you know. She's in the library. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, right. Sylvia. Right. Lovely, lovely person. And who could ever forget Coach Vignato? Oh, Joe Vignato. Oh, yeah. Fine, fine gentleman. Yes. He really was. He lived on McConnell, you know, over there. I know he Bayport. lived in Bayport someplace. Yeah, somewhere know. on McConnell. Yep. For a while, he was the phys ed department. Mm-hmm. He taught everything. And uh, I know toward the end, he, he had other coaches there. But And let's see, can you tell me about what what jobs you had over the years? Well, I haven't really had a whole lot of jobs. No. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my father was in the plumbing business yeah. with his father in in Brooklyn and Queens. Yeah. Uh, and then my, my dad wanted to move out here. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was getting a bit much in the city. Yeah. 
and he um, he worked for some uh, plumbing firms, and then he worked for a firm that was right here in Blue Point that some people may remember, Al Drum. Oh yeah, Al plumbing Drum. and heating. Uh, newer folks would have no concept, but no. At, at one point that firm was uh, very large. It had crews yeah. going, and the same day they would go into New York City to do oh. work, and another crew would go out to Montauk Point wow. to work, and they hit points all in between. Have it done by drum. I believe that That's was right. a... That was yes, like their logo or something. A logo, right? And they, yep. did, they did all aspects of plumbing, yeah. heating, uh, I believe refrigeration to some degree, air conditioning. Air conditioning. Uh, and I think, if memory serves me correct, and uh, you can double-check on this, I think... One of the people that um, was instrumental in his firm was Bob Seitz. Oh, yeah, Bob. Who then went on to sure. form the firm of Thermatrol. Right. Linda was just here this morning. Uh-huh. Yep. And Bob is still mm-hmm. with us. Oh, Bob's full blast. Yeah, and, he, and he's still Bob. He hasn't yep. changed a still bit. Still Bob. Gotten just a little bit yep. slower, but it still has the same yep. great sense of humor. And he lives relatively he lives close to us, right, right here in uh, of, Springhorn. A couple of lots up here in the yep. Springhorn Estates. Yep. He, he lives there, and uh, yeah. he's he's still doing his thing. Where, where was Drum, have it done by Drum, where was their office? Where as were a, they? As a matter of fact, it was on Division Avenue. Oh, was that right there? Just right in the vicinity oh. where Thermatrol is now. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes. So that's yes. where they were, division. There's a few industrial buildings up yeah. there that have been here for a long time. Yes. And and um, they occupied oh. one or two of those buildings up there. And Al Drum lived here in town, I presume. Yes, Al yeah. Drum lived here, at least part of the time he lived sure. here. Uh, and my father had a, um, I don't remember exactly how long, but I, I know he had a, a good relationship with yeah. Al uh, as, as far as being a plumber. Sure. And then my father wanted to branch out and do his own thing, yeah. and he formed his own firm. And yeah. it was J.W. Salwine Plumbing and Heating. And yeah. then right around 1964, when yours truly was graduating, he <laughs> added the words, and son. And son. And that was one of the proudest moments That's of my That's wonderful. Life. Yep, yep. And it's still there, right? You're still in business. Oh, no. And uh, that's a great segue to some of the other things you yeah, have here. Yeah. Uh, when my father finally decided to retire, unfortunately, the situation, the financial situation in the in the area was such that my parents couldn't afford to retire and stay in Blue Point. No. Uh, just the taxes and the cost of living was just too high. Yeah. Um, so they uh, ended up going down to Georgia, Georgia, a tiny place called Pine Mountain Valley, which yeah. is just what it sounds like. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's some other blue pointers down there. The um, Medics were there, weren't they? The Medics oh, were oh. there. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. there, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Medic, yeah. senior, have both yes, passed just, away. That's right. Um, and Ruth just passed away. Uh, Ruth just oh, passed Ruth away. Medic. And as yeah. uh, this is an interesting aside, Otto Medic, oh, uh, sure. the son, that is my brother-in-law. He oh. married my sister uh, oh. a long time ago. But so. life was good down there, I suppose. Well, they they enjoyed it. Less taxes, uh, nicer climate. Oh, well, uh, the climate uh, is very much very similar to ours. It is. They get snow, huh? Every once in a while, yeah. they get some snow. As a matter of fact, my mother still lives down there. Oh, she does. She lives yeah. in the next town over, Pine Mountain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the only place I ever got stranded by a snowstorm is when I was in Atlanta, oh. and I was trying to drive to my mother's house oh. in in Pine Mountain, oh. and they had a snowstorm, and they just couldn't handle it, and I got stranded for a few days. They don't have the equipment. Exactly. Uh, they really don't. No. It, it was an, oh. an anomaly that they got that much yes. snow. That was that was strange, I'm but sure. Anyway. And while we were very while we're talking about that, I consider myself very fortunate yeah. that I'm retired now, working on my fifth yeah. year, and I'm still right here in Blue Point. My That's parents, good. my parents didn't have that opportunity because of the yeah. financial right. uh, situation. So uh, I'm yeah. cons- uh, I'm very very lucky to have yeah. my wife and myself yeah. still staying in Blue Point. And you have a beautiful home there. Well, I love the turret. Thank you. It reminds me of the old it. Blue Point. You know, yes, I, the turret. I, I touched on a few of the places mm-hmm. that I lived yeah. um, um, besides Blue Point, but it was never home. 
Right. And I remember my wife and I traveling to where we lived in Holtzville or where yeah. we lived in in, um, in Middle Island for a while. Yeah. And as we'd go past on the expressway, exit 62, <laughs> it always a little tug at my heart. Yeah. Oh, we should be turning off down this road. But we didn't. But, you know, uh, persevere, continue to work. Sure. And this is home. Those other places were houses yes. that we enjoyed, yeah, but we were course. never home till we came never back. Home. To now blue. you're back. Now we're back. Back to stay, I hope. And, yeah. you know, it was all blue pointers that were responsible for it. They uh, were. Huh? Because I was talking to <clears throat> another longtime blue pointer, yeah. Al Furchett and his oh, wife, yeah, Marilyn. Of course. And yeah. they mentioned that, you know, you ought to, if you're really interested, you ought to contact this fellow, um, Mark Bean. Oh yeah. Uh, from the of course the beans have been here forever. Oh, forever. And I said oh. to my wife, yeah, custom builder, like we're gonna be able to afford that. Yeah, well, right. it doesn't hurt and it doesn't cost anything to ask the question. Yeah. Spoke to Mark about a couple of things. And he had a piece of property and he had some yeah. uh, building plans and everything just came just together. Just fell into place. Just fell into place, yeah. so Al and Marilyn Verger from Blue Point put us yeah. on to Mark from Blue Point, who yeah. built us a beautiful house in Blue Point, and here we are. And now the Furchets are your neighbors. The Furchets right are across right across the street from us. And who I, don't know, I don't know if they were so happy that it turned oh, out like oh, that, I'm but sure no, they I'm just are. kidding. And where did the idea of that turret come from, then, on that, your house? That was... The, arch, the, the, plan know, the, that, the plan plans. that Mark, one of the plans he had beautiful. available, we just thought that was such a nice feature. So beautiful. We really enjoyed it. It is. Yes. It's like something you would have seen 100 years ago. Yes. Very nice, very just beautiful, very beautiful. And let's see, how'd you meet and marry your spouse? Well, yeah, Jean. We talked about some of the jobs I had, uh, and I think I digressed as oh, I very okay. often do. Yeah, uh, I was in the I was in uh, the plumbing business with my father for um, several years, and um, I always had an intense desire to be very much involved in the fire service. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to blame that on my father. And, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. My, yeah. my father first got his taste of the fire service when he was still in New York City. And after he came out of World War II, where he served proudly overseas, uh, at that point, the fire department of the city of New York still was uh, going through some manpower issues because so many of its members were gone. Were gone. Uh, and they used uh, an auxiliary fire corps for a while. That was basically men like like my father who were not paid. They were trained in the basics, and they could help outside of the building. They were not allowed to go in a building, but they would help do some of the stuff on the outside of the building. My father was involved in that. When we left Queens, where we were living, and moved here first to North Patchogue and then, I mean, to Canyon Lake, and then ultimately to Blue Point. Uh, that's when he got involved in the fire department. Good. And of course, I would tag along with him as he went to the firehouse for this or that or the other thing. And I became very enamored of yes. the fire service. And certainly I stepped into that same um, thoughts when. Um, I became old enough to join the fire department. Mm -hmm. But then as I, and I enjoyed the plumbing business, but as I went through life, I I said, you know, I wonder if I can't get a little something a little bit closer to the fire service. And I took some civil service tests, and I ended up getting a job with the town of Brookhaven as a fire inspector, Good. which is about as close to a career firefighter as you would yes. get in, in our, um, in Suffolk County. Uh, and I ended up spending 27 years working for the town. And 24 of those, 24 and a half of those 27 years, I was directly involved with either the Division of Fire Prevention uh, or the, the upper levels uh, of that department that encompassed that. So really, I was a plumber. I was a government worker, mostly in the fire and safety field. And then I had a three-year break when I was in the military. Uh, other than that, those are the, really the only jobs mm -hmm. I've had. Yeah. And I retired from the town of Brookhaven in um, January 2009, and I became the district manager for the Blue Point Fire District, yeah. which um, is all basically administrative um, 
Uh, nobody gets paid to do firefighting or rescue or anything in Blue Point, as in most of our other party bombs. So I feel I have the best of both worlds. Yeah. And then Gene entered the picture. Now. Somewhere. When I was working <clears throat> for the town of Brookhaven, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden my wife appeared on the scene. <laughs> Obviously, she wasn't my wife at the no, time. No, you no. Know, she, uh, first she started as a uh, part-time clerk in the fire marshal's office. Oh, okay. You know, and then um, ultimately we, yeah. we kind of clicked. Cool. We got together, and um, mm. romance bloomed, and uh, we got married. That's wonderful. Now, at that particular point in time, as as grand as that was, it did create a potential problem because how mm. I you know a spouse cannot work for another spouse. Yes. Certainly not in government. That no. that will not. Not only is it not acceptable, no. but it just won't work. No, no. So we had to um, <clears throat> had to actually create a shall we say a wall. You know, I can certainly talk to her with no problem. Of course. But, but there was well, never any, um, can you do this for me? Please do this. I need you to do that. Uh, I basically could not at all be involved with anything that no. she was doing for uh, the job. And similarly, if she had a question or a problem or a request for a vacation or anything, I, she could not approach me on it. Right. And um, uh, it, it, never, it never created a, a problem. But I will say that because of this uh, separation of of lives, yeah. uh, sometimes she had to, I'm not going to say suffer, but it was to her disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she had a, you know, she had to just grin and bear it, but that's yeah. the way it was going to be. Exactly. Um, because we had to maintain that professional sure. distance. It, sure. It's the only way to do business. Yeah. I'm glad that she persevered and... We're yeah. still here. Still, We're still there. married. Still married. Still on right. King Street. Boy, that's wonderful. Good for you. And what year were you married then? Was that? Was been in the sixties, maybe? Oh no, 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 no. Well, I I was married for a time uh, yeah. prior to that. Prior to that, okay. Yeah, but that's no, good. We got Later. married in I believe ninety five. Ninety five. That's perfect. That's so perfect. So, can you think of any? Any s- historical events or storms or the war or railroad closings that affected your family and the community? Well, the only war I was, um, shall I say, involved in, of course, was the, the conflict in Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. Um, hmm. Where I was a participant, and I did serve in, yeah. in that country. And I consider myself, again, fortunate that I yeah. returned unscathed, yes. both mentally and physically. Many of my colleagues in the military suffered very severe trauma, yeah. some emotional, some physical, some both. It was a terrible, terrible time. I saw just a few things, yeah. um, but I was very fortunate because I <clears throat> I was rather unscathed by that. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm not going to say I enjoyed Vietnam, but I, I'm yeah. very glad that I had the experience <clears throat> both of the military good experience, and, and of serving in a <clears throat> foreign country <clears throat> and to some degree in a combat zone Yes, uh, because it makes you a little more understanding and it uh, broadens your horizons. It sure does. The whole world is not like life is in Blue Point. No. Um, there are some some areas that are totally different. And, yeah. Um, uh, you... I think to be a well-rounded person, you have to experience some of those things. Yeah. So that war, um, when I was, shall I say, personally involved in, but then there was another war, mm. uh, declared or otherwise, and that's the one that occurred on September 11th of yes. 2001. And that war still goes on to different degrees, yeah. different places. But uh, that was a terrible... That was a bad day. Terrible time, right? Terrible time for America. It certainly was. Mm -hmm. Um, I I remember what I I was doing, where I was, and what happened. um, I I remember it as clear as a bell. That was sort of like our parents remembering Pearl Harbor. Exactly. My parents always remembered, and our generation remembers 2001. 2001. I've mentioned that before then. Nine Eleven mm-hmm. was my Pearl Harbor. That's Pearl Harbor, yeah. Right, and yeah. and uh, so I, true. And and I have to, 
I'll just say one brief thing about yeah. that. Yeah. Never in my wildest imaginations did I ever think that there would be 10 engine companies from the fire department of the city of New York in, in Suffolk County, coming to Suffolk County during the wildfires mm. that we had. Yes. I remember specifically those 10 mm. engine companies because we had no more resources available. That was when we had the huge fires out on out east. sunrise hours, yeah. fires. I never, ever thought we would get to the point that we would have to have the fire department of the city of New York come to our assistance. I know. Similarly, never in my wildest imagination did I think that some years later I would return the favor yes. and respond to red lights and sirens yeah. into New York City. And I remember to this day that terrible, terrible plume of smoke as we went in there. Um, and that smoke was there for days. It was there for days. Days. It was, it was, it was days. just terrible. It was terrible. But that's just the <clears throat> physical aspect of yeah. it, the mental aspect of it, um, of so many innocent, innocent, innocent civilians, innocent yeah. firefighters, first responders, so many people, yeah. not only in New York, Pennsylvania, at, oh. at the Penning Out. Oh, was done. A terrible, <clears throat> terrible day. I... I I can truly understand what the people went through yeah. on, on in Pearl Harbor on December the 7th. We have a first responder buried in the cemetery back there, jo John, Ma John McNamara. John McNamara was a good yeah. friend of mine. Yeah. And I had the privilege of being one of his pole bears. Yeah, it was a bad day for Blue Point, a bad day for the country, a bad day for the world. But we've... Yeah. We're beyond yeah. that now. Yeah, we're beyond We're still it. living with it, and now yeah. we're... Now we're I know. So we're still enjoying our beautiful Hamlet. Yeah, thank God. A little old Blue Point, yep. Storms, well, we've had this storms. collection of, of storms. Oh, we have. Snowstorms, hurricanes. <clears throat> the recent one, uh, this Hurricane Sandy. Sandy. Uh, uh, was still, uh, some of us in Blue Point are still recovering from the uh, sure damages that <clears throat> uh, occurred there. And I wonder if... We're very fortunate. Personally, we are very fortunate because my wife and I lost exactly one breadfruit pear tree. One breadfruit That's pear. all we lost. Well, you're so lucky. that is nothing. That is uh, nothing. nothing. But there are other people who lost virtually sure. everything. And I wonder, do you ever really recover from something like know. that? I don't know. I think the worst thing to lose would be photographs, wedding right. albums. Exactly. Because you can always replace a car yes. or whatever. You can replace all well, you, that. Can't you can't replace, replace the your others. memories and dreams. Oh. And, and, of course, the snowstorms that we get. Yeah, of uh, course. We can deal with them. Absolutely. Yep. The only thing we do miss, and the younger generation does, no electricity. They, it, it's a little frantic for kids today. <laughs> they yes, don't know what well, to do. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fortunate in that regard, too, because a few years ago I decided to have a generator installed in my house. Oh, that so, helps. So that's that great. helps, yes. Have a generator installed. Exactly. But we don't usually lose it for that length of time. No. I mean, it's a rare occurrence when that happens. What's your earliest memory of Blue Point, Joe, going back? Well, I remember when we moved into our new house yeah. then, um, yeah. with my parents, of course. Mm -hmm. And we moved in on Christmas Eve Day, 1955. And at the time, yeah. you know, 1955 was a like a... A different time, things sure. were simpler, yeah. and my father used to still dress up as Santa. Claus. Santa, of course. Of course, he never fooled me, oh, you know. <laughs> but my younger brother would enjoy uh -uh. that. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. uh, but I remember my my father was so mm -hmm. tired from doing all that work, yeah. moving in and everything that. We, he just sat in his chair and, and yeah. just fell asleep. That was our Christmas Eve. And we, um, even to this day, celebrate the German style of Christmas. Oh, so oh, the nice. exchange of gifts and so forth yep. took place on Christmas Eve that's nice. night. Day before. Right. <clears throat> yep. um, but that year, we, we decided to do it Christmas morning. Yes, I don't blame you. Get a night's sleep first. But but uh, yeah. that that's the probably the... The first yeah. memory I have of Blue Point, oh, yeah. it was on Division Avenue, and oh. uh, it was paved with, um, I think they called it Bluestone. Oh, Bluestone. Right. Oh. And I do remember um, yeah. for quite a few years after that, uh, yeah. in the summertime, the 
town would come by and they'd oil the road, oil. put down the bluestone, and then sweep it up or whatever they did afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, and then finally became a regular yeah. asphalt. The road. EPA would really, I mean, we didn't have the EPA then. No. Putting no, oil no. on the roads, right. no less. Wow. Well. And perhaps that is one of the um, nicest things I recall about Blue Point. Not that it's not, not that it's not nice now. Oh but, yeah. No. yeah. But uh, it was things were just so much simpler, simple, and quieter, yeah. um, nicer. And now we have um, well, we have a lot more people here. We have a do. lot more traffic um, and a lot more stuff going on. And um, I'm probably equally as guilty of this, all the electronic yeah. um, uh, communications yeah. methods we have with cell phones and pages and emails and texting and, uh, texting and everything else. And yeah. I know I am you know, part of that problem because <clears throat> I, I send and receive text messages all day long. It's part mm -hmm. of how life gets done these days. <laughs> but sometimes yeah. when my cell phone <clears throat> is not working for some reason, yes. you know, it's nice. It's not nice. A, it's not a no. bad thing. Landlines are almost gone now. It's I don't know. They're, I don't know where you would find the nearest payphone. I, I, I don't know where you, where you would either. I'm not sure if a 12-year-old kid would know what a phone booth was. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember a Nicholson store across the street. You went up two steps, and they had two phone booths there. Yes, the I wall. remember those phone booths. Yep. They were the old wooden ones. Old yes. wooden phone booths. Yep. And today they're in the Smithsonian. Or, you know, yeah. of that era. But I also remember going to sure. Nicholson's at oh, that yes, soda Nicholson. fountain. I'd have oh, yeah. a nice um, uh, ice cream sure. soda or oh, egg cream nice. or something. Seal yep. Nicholson and Riney Nicholson. Seal and Riney Nicholson. And, yeah. um, you know, Neil was just up here recently. Ne the son. Oh, the son. The son, oh, okay. yeah, from Georgia. Yeah, he's yeah. a nice kid. So what places stand out in your mind in Blue Point that from growing up years... Places well, that you remember. Well, Nicholson's. Oh yeah, right across yep. the street. Yep. Yep. Um, and that, that was that was a very pleasant place to be. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, and um, of course the school and the yeah. firehouse and the library. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't this beautiful building no, we have today, no. but it was just the, the building in the very front. Yeah. Um, but um, it was it was um, sure. always a place where you could go, and it was nice and quiet. Yeah. And did you know Bob Brown over there? Oh, absolutely. You knew Bob. Bob Brown store. Bob. Oh, and yes. And then um, for a while there, we had, it seemed like, a bank on every corner. And, of I course, the bank was a gas station. Yeah. For this little hammer, yeah. we had so many banks and gas stations. And now yes. we only have yeah. just, a, just a few. The other thing I remember was the Rose Fair. Remember the oh, yes. acres of Green greenhouses houses. over there? And they're all gone today. Yes. Yeah. I don't believe there's any more. Greenhouses I don't left think there are. Uh, up no. on Eatondale Avenue. Well, maybe up there. I think there's still one at the very end oh, of okay. Eatondale Avenue. How active it is, I don't know. But uh, Yeah, Blue Point, I don't think we have. No, I don't think we do. I know in Bayport, Daisy Garden, Bayport Flower yeah. Houses. Yeah. But over here, I know. And at one time, Blue Point was nicknamed Under Glass. We were like the city mm -hmm. under glass here because we had so many greenhouses. The other place I, I I also remember was it's not so much a place that is a thing is the railroad trestle. Oh, the trestle! You know, oh, it, man. it took me a while. You yeah. know, when I was a young child, I didn't understand. But later, I said, "Oh boy, this is strange. It's a little blue point, and we have our own railroad trestle. We have a bridge. It seems to be very strange. Everybody else yeah. has grade crossings, yeah. but then you know, I, I understand uh, the history of Blue Point that it uh, yeah. was directly related to the. Uh, the hotels. The hotels we had here drew so many people. That's mm -hmm. still the, as, yeah. as I recall, uh, the history of it. Anyhow, that is um, perhaps not the very first railroad trestle. There was an earlier one. There was yes. an earlier one. It was removed in 1920 and replaced with this one. Right. So yeah. it's been. This one has been there for almost a hundred years. Almost a hundred years, yeah. and it gets hit on a regular basis. Oh. You know what it is? It's, it's 10 feet 4 inches. Right. And I think the people that hit it are people that rent a truck. And they're not used to driving with an 11-foot cab behind them. Whatever it is, they're always sorry afterwards. They're always sorry because they're going to lose their, look like an accordion. 
Well, sometimes <clears> it's, <throat> it's that, but I, rarely are there injuries involved. Yeah, so that, that's that's yeah. fortunate. But and the fire department responds if you hit the trestle, well, if, if needed. If I mean, needed. Very often, it's you know a, a box truck and it peels the couple, peels the, they, top off. Peels the, uh, yeah. the aluminum roof off. Well, there's nothing for the fire department. No there's danger. No, reason for that. No, no, there's no danger. No. no. Um, you know, of course, then the, the police department shows up, and yeah. you know they have to do what they have to do with the drivers and so forth. And somebody, I guess, has yeah. to pay for the uh, railroad to come and send their engineers. I think they have to inspect it. it. Um, yeah. But that's that is uh, a thing that oh, I remember in Blue Point, uh, and I remember the old Blue Point laundry, of course, uh, uh, which it looks like the county uh, of Suffolk, which has. I believe purchased the property is now in the process of doing some cleanup. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And perhaps they're going to make a park or something. I don't Maybe. know what they're going to do, but it looks really like they're doing something. And <clears throat> given the nature of the laundry business in general, not just the Blue Point yeah. laundry, but um, you know, from ninety or hundred years ago, I, I could imagine the environmental issue may be significant sure. uh, there because it was a different way of life back then. It was chemicals. So who knows mm-hmm. what they're finding? There. Sure, uh, but and then I also remember the old Reed's ice cream. Oh, the ice cream plant. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, and at the head of Blue Point Avenue, uh, where there's a series of stores and a small yeah. shopping center. I remember the um, the original building there, mm. um, which um, was destroyed in a fire. That was an interesting fire. But we was that the Blue Point Inn? No. Oh, okay. across the Blue Point Inn. Oh, across over here. Right. Okay. I also do remember the Blue Point Inn fire. That was a big fire. fire. That, that was, was a, a big fire. A there. bitterly cold day. Right. Yeah. Uh, but this this is the group of stores across the street on the north side yeah. of Montauk. Yeah. Furniture store was there. Yes, was it yes, that's correct. Or Not, I don't believe price, it was Flaxman. No, it was a Price Right or I don't know. But I don't, it, was it was a, a furniture it was a store furniture in the store. corner. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, there were some interesting Never. moments there. Yeah. What do you think was our most notable fire that you were involved in? Like maybe the, 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 convent, the convent down here? The Definitely convent? the convent. That was Definitely. it, huh? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I was the chief of the fire department in 78 and 79, okay. and a few months after I was out of office in the beginning of 1980 is when that yeah, fire it occurred. It was Lincoln's the, birthday, February 12th, mm-hmm. 1980. The f- it it was a it was a fire, and I remember yeah. being being on the on the back of the engine that yeah. we were going down the road, and we had had a smattering of false alarms down sure. there, and alarm sure. malfunctions, I should say. Sure. And we thought, well, this is another one, yeah. and then we heard the announcements over the radio. We said, this is the real, real. deal. And I yeah. remember pulling into the back of the building, yeah. uh, to the south side, and looking up and seeing the smoke coming out and seeing those two elderly nuns trying to help an even older nun down the stairway to safety, the fire escape They were lucky nobody was killed there, Joe. I said to myself, it's going to be an absolute miracle if nobody gets killed. I don't think anybody got killed or even seriously injured. That was probably the most notable fire. um, The only casualty there was their dog. The convent, they had nuns uh, had a dog. The dog died from smoke inhalation. Uh, but that was it. Yeah. And I did, I went down there that night, and one of the nuns said to me, Yes, I'm out, but my teeth are in there. Uh, well. her, she lost her teeth. Oh, well. <laughs> but we were very lucky nobody was killed. Yes. yes. But it was a big fire, I know that. How many companies responded? Patchogue come over or Bayport? Oh, Patchogue. What's the number? Bay, of Patchogue there? and Bayport, uh, I'm pretty sure. Sable. Yeah, Sable, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if North Patchogue was there, um, but there, were, uh, it, there yeah. was a, a lot of work to be done. Yeah, and, uh, a lot of work. I believe the library, I think it was the library or the chapel. I forget yeah. one of them. Perhaps yeah. both of them survived yeah. uh, to some degree, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then the building was um, not too long afterwards. It was yeah. redone into a more modern. The other building we were lucky about was Our Lady of the Snow, the old church. There was a fire in that building. I was uh, in Vietnam at the time, oh, but you yes, were. Yes. All my parents sent me but all the clippings. That could have been that could have been demolished or burned down. Right, uh, but it wasn't. It was saved and that, you know renovated. That's an old building. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. old. It's a beautiful, building. beautiful old building. Church. I would have hated to see it go, but 
we were lucky that night. Yes. And, yeah. and that's another one of the places that I remember. Oh, yeah, of course. Lady of the Snow. Yeah, Lady of the Snow. Uh, yep, and some yeah. of them. A very pretty the church. Piece, yeah. It's a great church for weddings because they come out and they line up, you oh, know, on the uh, stairway it there. It's perfect. Yeah, that's it'd be, good. It would be nice if we could have more services there, but it just yeah. isn't big enough it, to accommodate people. It can't people. accommodate the people. Right. No, so, no. But at least we still have it anyway. Yes, we do. Now, do you remember anything about the fire department, the bazaar they used to have out here and all I, that? Yes, I they do. were wonderful that. days. I, as a... As a as a, as a kid? As a kid, yes. Yeah, of course. You know, I wasn't in a fire department no, then. No, no, but, but... I do know that it was a lot of work that they used to have to work. drag all that stuff out I there know. and set it up into those wood yep. frame canvas covered they had the uh, wheels joints and had the wheels. Oh, and, they, all those wheels had to be balanced. Oh, yes. It was tough. Yes. But they did a great job, I know that. Yep, but it was truly small-town America oh, yeah. at its yeah. best. And I have to say yeah. that this... this Chicken barbecue that the oh, fire yes. department hosts every year. Yes. Um, it's not so much a fundraiser no, as it no. is a, a community. community event. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, no. when the last work was done on the firehouse, there were a few years mm -hmm. when they couldn't do it because yes. it was a construction, construction site. site. Right. And it was mentioned more than once, yeah. not by firemen, but by other um, residents yeah. of the community that they missed that because it was a nice yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and it is a good time. It's a family time. It's a family time. Um, it's not a lot of carousing and carrying on no. goes on there. There's usually something for everyone. And there's hundreds of people, hundreds of towns yes. people come out to that. And it's really nice. <clears throat> um, it sure it's is. A, it is a lot of work. I know that yeah. personally. Oh. But it's it's nice kind of work. It makes you feel How good. How are you doing with younger members over here? We are very fortunate. We are. I'm we glad have, to hear that. We have a good an group. adequate number of people. More good. than adequate, I, I would say. You know, we're, we're not overloaded with people. It's okay. Uh, we don't have a quota, but, um, no. but we're not uh, in the situation that some body bombers find yeah. themselves. Not just in this uh, Long Island or New York or even the, the country. Um, volunteerism seems to be a thing of the past yeah, very often. It does. Uh, and particularly in the fire service because when whether you are paid uh, as a career firefighter or a volunteer, it doesn't make any difference. You still have to have a certain minimum amount of training. Sure. And the training requirements keep increasing every year. I believe it. And not only to ensure the safety of the responders, uh, but to ensure the safety of other people who are going to help sure. uh, so that we can get to them in, in their time of need and to do the right thing or to save their yeah. property better. So, And it says fire department, probably always say fire department, but it's so much more than that. Yes. Uh, there's water rescues and there's hazardous materials incidents and there's uh, carbon monoxide incidents and there's yeah. so many other things. So while the fire end has gone down, all of the other stuff has gone mm -hmm. up. We don't do EMS. We don't provide an ambulance here. Um, but we do all of the virtually everything else besides that. So the amount of training just increases. And when I say every year, it is every year. And if you intend to remain as an active member of the Blue Point Fire Department, you are going to um, attend a certain amount of training. And that's in the app bank, isn't it? Well, some of it's in Yapping. Some of it. A lot of it is done right <clears throat> here. Good. And then sometimes we travel, you know, not too far yeah. to get the specialized training. Sure. And because of that, as well as the decline in the desire for people to volunteer their efforts, um, many other fire departments find themselves in a very difficult situation. We are fortunate because we have a lot of, um, of younger members. Yeah. Uh, and this firefighting business is a young man's game. I'm 66 years old. Uh, I'm limited in what I can do, sure. what I should do, yeah. and what I will do. Uh, so we need to have these younger fellows. And yeah. we, are, and it's not only fellows, by the way. We have a, a young lady uh, who's, a, right. who's a firefighter. Sure, sure. Uh, and she's doing just fine. <clears throat> Good. Um, and it's the youth of America that will be our salvation. Yeah. Not only in the fire department. Do we ball, still have the mighty midgets? Yes, we do. We do. And they're what age level? Or oh, they're young. I, they're they're young. They're I, maybe they're ten to I believe seventeen or something. But they're like our that. future firefighters. They are. Good. They are. And we have a good number of them. I hope we have a good number of those. Good. And many of our new have. 
come from, from the, the, the mighty midget, mighty midget. yes as a matter of fact, good. Uh, we have uh, combined the teams from Bayport and Blue Point. Oh, good. Okay. So we have the some of the kids from Bayport sure. coming over here too, and uh, it's quite a crowd on the track. But that's good. It's good on because track coming up because the kids sure. are here doing something that they enjoy. I know. That's not destructive or mischievous no. or anything else, no. and they're not out doing God knows what else. Right. Uh, and if they're enjoying it and we're enjoying having them do it, well, don't we all win? The that? community will benefit from that yes. in the end. And how is our old truck doing over here, the American La France? Our old truck is getting tired. It's tired. <laughs> now, it's that's tired. what, 34? 1934. 34. So that even predates the library. We're celebrating the 75th anniversary yep. of the library, 1938. Yep. So that's as a, 1934. As a, of, as a matter of fact, that 1934 La France is the first fire engine I was ever trained to drive. That was the one you drove, huh? Okay. Wow. Um, but I never got to drive it too long because shortly thereafter is when I was drafted into the military. Yes. And when I came out, mm -hmm. it was retired the from the truck retires. Service. Uh, but it's still here. Its primary duty is mm. uh, parades. Parades. Um, and we just, just yesterday... Uh, one of our members, um, again, uh, one of the Berg family, oh, yeah, Bill Berg, of course. Uh, okay. was able to f finally what? finish restoring, um, doing ahead. a brake job and, oh, and some wonderful. other work on it because it stood for a while with no wheels on it. It was just on jack stands yeah. because we were waiting for parts and, you know, yeah. when, do it when you can. Um, and he just got it in time for... Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Now, will that truck go to Sable then for Well, the we're hoping or? because now it mm -hmm. hasn't stood idle for a while. Now it seems no. like we may have a small electrical problem okay. with the generator on board. So uh, there's a possibility it'll go to Sable. Uh, so. uh, possibility may not make <clears> it, uh, but I'm, I'd be pretty pretty sure that it's going to be in the Blue Point Parade. The Blue too. Point Parade, right at Blue Point Avenue. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah be we, nice. could, we could almost push it if we <laughs> have It'll make it. It'll Sable is another story. But well, let's let's not uh, push our let's, luck. We won't push our luck on Sable. And the other the other uh, primary duty of that uh, truck uh, now mm. is to carry our members on their very last ride. I know. And yeah, that's sad, but it's sad, but yeah, you know, but it's a tradition. It's and, a tradition, you know, sure. So let's see. Anything else about old Blue Point years ago, or let's see, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you want to? Well, I don't add? know. The list talked about. Um, what did people do years ago yeah, for a they, living? Yeah. Basically, the same thing they're doing now. Sure. We, we don't really have any industry per se, no. very, very, very limited. Uh, there's no manufacturing or anything goes on. No. We have a small commercial district. The only thing that we don't see as much of today that we did even in 55 and 57 when I was here is the, uh, the maritime industries, the Bayman. Right. Uh, I <clears> remember <throat> when... Right. There were a lot of people who made their living on the bay. Sure. As clamors, some as other fishermen. Uh, but that is not something you see anymore in Blue Point. No. Uh, I think that's taken a downturn generally in all of Long Island. Uh, perhaps a little resurgence in, resurgence in some areas, but I don't see it uh, in Blue Point. Do you think this new inlet will help? I think the flush out the bay. I think the new inlet will certainly help the um, the cleanliness of the bay. Yes. I don't think you're going to see a resurgence of of the uh, clamming industry. Clams, crabs, fish. No, I, I, I you'll certainly see the improvement for um, uh, recreational oh, fishermen yeah. and clamors and so forth. Yeah. Um, but I don't see that uh, yeah. that's going to be. I, I think it's too <clears throat> hard. Mm. to get enough clams or whatever the product is. To make a living? To make a, a living <clears throat> in these days. So. Are you a boat owner? No. No, I'm not either. No, I, so. And, and you know, no. I enjoy going on somebody else's yes. boat. I yes. I don't enjoy working no. on boats. No. I don't enjoy no. having to pay for them. No. When they talk about a big hole in the water surrounded no. by fiberglass into which one but just pours Throw unlimited them. amounts of dollars. Uh, I always heard that B-O-A-T. Yes. Break out another thousand. Yes. Because that's where it's going, right in the boat. Right. 
So anything else you wanted to bring up while we're here, wrapping it up? Well, no, I... Yeah, it's a beautiful town. Uh, that That's really all I yeah. would say is, yeah. you know, since 1955, yeah. when when I first moved here, yeah. um, it's always had a special being to be. It's always been home. Home. And it is now. And uh, my sister, when mm-hmm. she retired, she moved off... Uh, down to Georgia and then yeah. down to Florida. My brother lives in uh, Texas. Uh, my mother lives in Georgia. Um, I have other relatives who live here and there. They went for warmer climates. <clears throat> of course, many people are, you know, affected by the financial sure. situation. But I've always said to my wife, "This is it. This is the last stop." Yep, Blue Point. And, yep, and she mm-hmm. said yes, and I know where the final stop is too. Right, by, right in the out back in here. the cemetery behind. <clears> the <throat> yep. She said you can be on the first two truck every long. It's a beautiful cemetery. It's, it's a nice place is. to wind it, up. It it is typical it's Blue Point. Typical R- rural. Yeah. It's quiet. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's nice, and um, it, it'll be home eventually. Yes, and, yeah, and it has a lot of a lot of nice people who are concerned with keeping it that sure way. Sure does. As they have the rest of Blue Point, I know. yourself included. Yeah, I like uh, Eric that. Klug, I think yeah. Al Fresh is on that committee. Yeah, so Al's there. People. George Becker. I know you mentioned Herb Hannon before, and you're talking about Blue Point being home. On his front porch down there, he had the 1854 yes. house. He had a, a sign that said. Down home. Yeah. That was his sign on his house. Yeah. Nice. Number one, Dane Street. It's mm-hmm. still a pretty house. It's beautiful. Yeah. I can't imagine not living in blue. No, I couldn't either. No, no. Sometime when you retire, I know what happened to me, people say to you, well, where are you moving? But I'm not moving anywhere. I like it right here. Yeah, I'm not moving. <laughs> I love yeah. Blue Point. That's... Yeah. That's the point. And Beautiful I worked, blue I worked very hard for a very long time, <clears throat> uh, you know, to be able to sure uh, to to stay right here. And, uh, you know, um, the yeah. situation and circumstances are such that yeah. that's where I'm going to stay. That's great. Well, thanks again, Joe, for Gene, coming in and spending pleasure. like an hour with us. Well, I it's could probably go on for more hours, but and let's not do that. This marks the end of the interview with Joe Sourwine.